I think it's a, it's a moment in time for, for U.S. soccer, the Federation, you know, to, to really think through the process, what happened the last couple of years. The World Cup coming up in 2026 in your home country, a once in a lifetime opportunity. We didn't take advantage of this uh, Copa America because I always, I beg the Federation always to, to please uh, take me to the Copa America as often as you can because these are the tournaments where you, you learn the most. Those are the, the real moments to grow, to learn, to mature. And the U.S. missed that moment in this Copa America. They didn't mature, they didn't learn. The decision they have to make now going forward is a big one and hopefully, hopefully they make the right one. All right, here it is, the big news of the day. Greg Berhalter out as U.S. men's national team manager. The decision comes nine days after the U.S. crashed out in the group phase at Copa America. Berhalter, who was out of contract after leaving the U.S. to the World Cup in Qatar, was rehired in June of last year with a contract through 20. 26, his final record, 44 wins, 17 losses, 13 draws, over 74 games in charge. In the end, he did lead the U.S. to the Gold Cup title in 2021, as well as two CONCACAF Nations League titles. Let's get to uh, some of the more uh, interesting fallout here. I think we've got a statement from Matt Crocker, who, of course, is the uh, sporting director who rehired Greg Berhalter in June of 2023. Quote, our immediate focus is on finding a coach who can maximize our potential as we continue to prepare for the 2026 World Cup, and we have already begun our search process. So that's from Matt Crocker. What about the man who is now out of the job as the manager of the U.S. men's national team, Greg Berhalter? He released a statement, quote, I want to thank the U.S. Soccer Federation for entrusting me to lead this team for the past five years. Representing our country is a tremendous honor. And I'm proud of the identity we have built on and off the field. It was very gratifying watching this team improve over the years, and I remain grateful for the lifetime bonds created with our players, coaches, and staff members. The Copa America result is extremely disappointing, and I take full responsibility for our performance. Our approach and process was always focused on the 2026 World Cup, and I remain confident that this group will be one of the great stories in 2026. Uh, Herc, you've been calling for this longer than uh, pretty much anybody else I know. Now that it's happened, what's your reaction? What's next? Mm -hmm. I think it was expected. You can't start off your second term and when everybody expects a progression because it was so negative and they couldn't believe they went back to that same well. It's been so easy just to turn the page to go away from Greg Berhalter given the circumstances of the rehiring. The easiest thing would have been just to walk away. Mm -hmm. They went the hard route. So now you're like, okay, now you got to put up, right? If not, shut up. And it's a case where the team regressed. Certain benchmarks were not met. This team looks worse. These players got too comfortable. A lot of these players vouched for Greg Berhalter. And in that vouching became complacent, and you get these results. And it's not just Copa America. You go beyond Copa America. They, Ten seconds away from losing Jamaica at home. You can look at the top 20 record. Sans Mexico that Greg Berhalter had with these players. You can look at the way record in CONCACAF with this very team. These benchmarks were not met. So now it's who's next. And in that who's next, there's a few comments that Matt Crocker says that give me the feeling you've got to go big. He says they're looking for a serial winner. One, right? Mm -hmm. And then also it's a competitive market out there salary-wise, and we have to be competitive and get the best level coach that I believe can take the program forward. So you got to spend. you got to go big and spend for what you believe will be the next coach of the U.S. men's national because you reset the market on the women's side. What type of message are you going to send on the men's side with the looming World Cup? Mm. Casey, what do you think of this? Um, Did Greg Berhalter get a fair shake in his second tenure? I think it's always difficult if you come into a second tenure not on a high from success, but with controversy and a lot of the sentiment kind of coming from the fans, coming from supporters, kind of saying, you know, why are we going in this direction? So not only if you're not coming in with like, oh, okay, hey, you know, great. We, we looked good. We got young players. They're maturing. They're doing this. But it's like, all right, what, what are we doing here? Uh, then you need to be even better. And the team hasn't been better. You got to kind of re-earn that trust. You have to re-earn, you know, that uh, that thought process. Because let's let, go back. I mean, I was listening. You know, Mo Adu said something on the Fox broadcast. And he said, "Look, Greg came in, and the team hadn't qualified for a World Cup mm -hmm. previously. 
He qualified and he got him out of the group stage. So Greg did his job very well to that point. Now, okay, if, 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 if the conversation is who's the guy to take it further, obviously the drama after the World Cup, everything that came with that, and then the points are valid of, okay, course was run, it ran well, you took us to where we needed to go, and now we're going to go somewhere else. But, yeah, it is a, it's an interesting situation now that when they elected to bring Greg back, it didn't work. They've had some problems. And now I disagree with her to the point that I don't think they can just blow budgets out. I don't think they can just go do things in a way just because they're hosting the World Cup. So I, I still think Why that not, Casey? If we say that the home World Cup is such an amazing mm -hmm. once-in-a-lifetime opportunity – and we believe U.S. soccer has the ability to raise money. I, I believe they have that ability. If you believe that they don't, no, 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 no. They, they literally I, have a marketing arm for this kind of stuff. They can raise yeah. the money. So why are we giving them a pass when it's an organization that hasn't really shown ambition? Why are we sitting up here saying they shouldn't blow out the budget? Why are we the ones saying that? I'm not saying they couldn't. And I'm not saying... Because a disastrous World Cup, Casey, is no. a disaster for you. True, soccer. but you're also thinking that just bringing in some manager is going to flip a switch and then they're going, we're going to have the best World Cup ever because we brought in a manager and paid him an absolute ton of money. It, it, there's a lot more to running a business than just, well, just go pay a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, okay, there, there, there's points where... Yes, spending wisely makes sense. And yes, you need to have the budgets to be able to be competitive. But there's also a point when you have to understand who you are. And we are not quite there yet. We are not of the upper echelon of, of, of international football or club football. And so we still have to understand to a degree we have to stay within ourselves. I, I'm all for pushing the budget, mm -hmm. 100%. But pushing the budget doesn't go from a base salary of 1.6, 1.8 to 10, 15, 20 million. It, it doesn't work that way. Regardless, if you can find a sponsor or a rich American to say, okay, here's the dump truck. Hey, you got some friends. I do don't, have don't some you, friends. Don't you have and, some friends, Case? And, <laughs> and I do have some friends that would be willing to. There you go. Let's hey, get on that phone. Here we go, baby. On that side of it as get well. Get the Rolodex. Uh, I mean, <laughs> do we still use that or no? I mean, there was a lot of pressure on Greg Berhalter for the yeah, last yeah. few months. Now that's kind of off the table. Is the pressure now on the players more squarely on this generation? Well, first the pressure is on the decision makers. Mm -hmm. Matt Federation 100%. to make yes. sure that they make the correct decision on the correct person to take over this job. You, you talk about building reputations on a decision. This is mm -hmm. the sort of decision that you have to get right. So that puts a lot of pressure on that process. But to your point, and you just mentioned that these players had vouched for Greg Berhalter, and it's a mistake of the decision makers to think that appeasing the players is the way that you run an organization like a national team. Because players did get comfortable, because players were not held accountable to the point that they should have been. And so, obviously, if I'm saying that those that are searching for a coach are under pressure, now those players, those players who have been appeased, those players who have sort of voiced their opinion and and they have said, okay, here's the coach that you wanted, and you did not come up with the performance as players, now the pressure is squarely on you. Mm -hmm. On you. It's on you. It's on, it's on, because now they made the change. Now you can't blame Greg Berhalter any longer. He is no longer the one that you two are going to be talking about and saying, he should be fired. Why is he still in a job? This is the only country in which this happens. He would have been gone by now anywhere else. With any sort of ambition and any soccer federation with ambition, he would have been gone. That's been the conversation. See how I watch Food Americas? You do. Look at I you. I watch Food <laughs> Americas religiously. Full of points. <laughs> religiously, I watch Food Americas. Well, here's the thing. All those points are now gone. Uh -huh. So, yes, the players, this pool of players, this talented group of players, now the pressure is on them to perform. 100% right. Congrats on the bullet points. That was good. Thank you. Well Thank you. For Americas. <laughs> but, for Americas. But baby. I will add something to this pressure. Matt Crocker, your, mm -hmm. first, your first bullet was Greg Berhalter. Mm -hmm. 
This one is squarely on you. Mm -hmm. How much confidence do you have in, in Crocker to get this higher right, knowing that he went back to the Burhalter well 12 months ago? 14 months ago, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a big swing and miss it's, on his record that's there. A, that's a very fair point, and uh, a black guy for, for Do Matt you trust Crocker. him to, uh, what does it say, get out of the Rolodex, as you said? Yes, yes, the, get out of the Rolodex. <laughs> he, here, here's the thing. I thought it was Casey that was going to go. I was going to And, and, and Greg okay. Berhalter has been at fault in the past of, of us using his words against him. Mm -hmm. Ma Matt Crocker reset the market on the women's side. Mm -hmm. Matt Crocker talks about a serial winner, talks about being competitive in the market to bring in a coach here to get results. You can't say that and go out and then, with all due respect, get a coach who doesn't have international experience who well, may be a serial winner at the MLS level, but doesn't have that international experience. Or I should say, not international experience, that winning experience at a high level. Mm -hmm. well, you that hate, commands You, you hate Shirondolo already. No, I wasn't even you, talking you, about Shirondolo. You, you hate Wilfred Nancy already. <laughs> uh, already. <laughs> but your own words will be used against you. You, and I repeat, and I repeat, and I repeat, you reset the market on the yeah. women's side. Actually, well, that's, no, I think, I'll, the best argument for Matt Crocker is that because you, you can look, you can look at what he did by rehiring Greg Berhalter and say, right. "Geez, I don't trust this guy at all." But then you can also say, on the women's side, they had a terrible World Cup. He he made a decision within a couple weeks to fire the manager, sure. and then he went out and got what most people agreed was the best manager, the best right. candidate possible in the world. period in the world. And, and I think if if you, if you lost faith for him hiring Berhalter, you got to look at the Hayes hiring and say, right. "Well." At least he did it there. Maybe sure. he can replicate that. Sure, but he also reset the market based off of a direction that U.S. soccer said they were going to yeah, go. Yeah, different market, it's but there's ambition there. No, 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 and, and, I, and I'm fine for the market, and, and I'm, and I'm because fine. Because really, more than anything else, Casey, yep. what, what he do, does there is he leaves the comfort of the American bubble, and that's, yep. I think, what the next conversation, because when you leave the comfort of the American bubble, the prices go up for those managers. Well, and that's really what we're talking about, because, you know, Ala's mentioning Steve Chirundolo. That's a name that's being kind of leaked out. We're hearing a lot of MLS names leaked out. I mean, they're gonna if they're going to make a big decision... It can't be a domestic candidate, can it? It doesn't look like it could be a domestic candidate. Um, but also, I think you're, you're, I don't know if we're overestimating it, because obviously being able to coach in a World Cup where you don't have to qualify, you know you're already there, and you take the job, you know you're going to be the World Cup coach. But we also have to understand that this isn't coaching Spain in a World Cup or coaching Germany in a World Cup. Yes, we're hosting... But it's not like, hey, I got a chance to, to coach a team that if we do it the right way, we can win this thing. Look, I, I hope we can be ultra competitive. Mm -hmm. And I hope that one day we're having a conversation in, in my lifetime, your lifetime, that we're saying that the U.S. is a prospect to win a World Cup. We're not quite there yet. So the allure of the U.S. coaching job isn't as sexy as I think a lot of fans actually feel that it is. Yes, it's a great job, and Jurgen talked about that. But is it to go get the marquee managers in the world? I'm not sure I mean, it is have you, yet. Got, have you gotten rid of Greg Berhalter to go hire Steve Trundolo? Is that what no, you've done? No, and no, not at all. Listen, I, I don't think anybody's asking for the U.S. to win the World Cup in 2026. But we can go down the list of countries who have been competitive in the World Cup. Turkey, South Korea, Guys, be competitive. You need, you need something positive around this But that's what I'm right trying now. to say, right? Like, you, nobody's asking Who's going to gonna get excited about Toronto, though? You, you're right. And I'm not, I'm not advocating for an MLS coach. I'm not, not that he's not a good coach, but... He could know. be a great coach. And, and quite frankly, the sad part is if they offer it to Steve Chirondolo, he may not feel he is ready, but he will have to take the opportunity because How it may never, it may never yeah. come about again in his life. So I'm not faulting a Steve Chirondolo or a Wilfred Nancy. I'm faulting a Matt Crocker here if that's the route he goes. Mm. That doesn't scream ambition to me. As much as I love me some Steve Chirondolo, well. as much as I think <laughs> Wilfred Nancy is a, is a great coach and what he's done mm -hmm. with the Columbus crew, does that scream ambition to you? Well. No, listen, this is, full, uh, this, this is your show. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm merely a guest. <laughs> Look, what Casey's saying in, in terms of the elite manager, and we had this discussion last night, is the United States an elite team? And the answer is no. So usually elite managers are matched up with elite team. And if I, I'm, I'm able to sort of 
drive this conversation away from the United States for a second. Look at Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a more elite team and more... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I, I see you over here breathing <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah, you know no, where I'm going with no, this. No, no, hold on. Yeah, look, they, they... If anybody were to have ambition in terms of an elite national team... Sure. And would, an attractive job. Yes, yes. Theory. And they, you talk about history and you talk about mm -hmm. the expectations of Brazil and that yellow jersey and 1970 World Cup and Pelé and all the players that have come through Brazil, and they are having difficulties having a manager that sticks. Now, some of it may have to do with the fact that the players that they currently have aren't exactly great, according or compared At a to... a Brazilian standard. Yes, yes. compared yes. to yeah. the standards of the past, but they're having difficulties finding an elite manager, and why we may have the conversation about Carlo Ancelotti and whether that was, that, was, that was decided or not decided, it didn't work out. In the end, it didn't happen. And so now Brazil, 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 Brazil. Can we agree that Brazil <laughs> and the United States are in different levels when it comes to history of this mm -hmm. game? Uh, and, ex and, and expectation. They're having difficulties and they're depending on Dorival Jr. Yeah. Who? That's right. Because he's Do Brazilian. Okay. Dorival Jr. Who? Dorival Jr. Who? Dorival Jr. Uh, That's what my point is. If, the, if Brazil cannot attract an elite manager. Because they don't want. Is it, oh, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? You, you think that they don't want an elite manager? They don't man? want a foreign coach. And the, one, and the one candidate that they did want. No, no, hold is, on a second. That is actually, Hercules, I have to tell you, you're wrong on this. Because one of the things that has been thrown around in Brazilian media is the fact that, you know what? We have a shortage of names of course, and talent on the, on the, and the coach. I don't think it's comparable. On, hold on. In the coaching position, we have a shortage. Of, of managers in the coaching position, we got to go internationally because, by the way, it's not working for us. That's what Brazil, Brazil is saying this. Brazil is saying this. Can we acknowledge that there's a huge gap between maybe some of the elite managers that you might think are unaccessible or you might think are unaccessible, and you guys may be right, and Greg Berhalter or kind of the, the level that they're, they've been shopping out of late, that, that ambition doesn't necessarily mean you land Jurgen Klopp or you land right. a Carlo Ancelotti. Maybe you, you aim for one of those guys, you get those oh, you guys. You mean like a guy like Zidane? <laughs> no, no, but there's, 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 no, a, there's a million miles between Zidane and These are the names that Berhalter. I keep to hearing. Your point, to your point, let me, yeah. let me, and this is yeah. not the name, but this would be the name type, Roberto Martinez. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, that yeah. may, that's yeah. more realistic. Right. No, I'm not saying but that that's a But that's a level guy. of ambition that is, that is not, we've not seen yeah. from Yosaka yet. I, all I'm saying is that's, yeah. that's the sort of, that's the neighborhood we're sure. talking about. Yeah, and that's okay. fine. Lopetegui, Roberto Martinez, uh, there's even been talks of a... Didn't you just say something? I mean, Lopetegui had a cup of coffee with, with Spain was before he got bounced. Yeah. Um, because he said, sorry, Spain, I don't want to coach you anymore. I'm oh, going to Real Madrid. Oh, that's fine. So, interesting choice, my former teammate. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he your backup goalie? Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Hey, 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 get out the Rolodex. <laughs> Tim <laughs> Howard would go there. Yes, Tim <laughs> will get him to come. <laughs> come on, Timmy, go get him. Not Casey. Uh, Casey, we're looking at what happened at the Copa America. Yes. Well, um, I, but I, I, I do want to pull back a little bit on Burhalter's legacy. Just okay. Quickly, in your opinion, what's his legacy in totality? The legacy in totality was the first stint. Mm -hmm. To me, that was his legacy. His legacy was he did, he did what was needed. He got the team, he got the country back on track. Qualified, decent World Cup, and, and, and then it was, you know, there's, there's that, that hindsight where then you like to say, you know what, I did my job, mm -hmm. now I'm going to move to the next one. And I know it's, it's, a, it's a tough position because we've seen it with, all of the recent managers. We saw it with Bruce, we saw it with Bob, we saw it mm -hmm. with Jurgen, we saw it with now with Greg, where you think, you know what, I can build off of the success I had in the first go round. And it's so difficult. There's so many managers, it, particularly at the international level, to repeat and to improve is so hard to do. And so circumstances being what they were post World Cup, it would have been so clean for U.S. soccer and so clean for Greg as well. Just to go, you know what? I did what I said I was going to do. U.S. soccer, Greg, you did what you said you were going to do. Things got a little funky. Let's 
let's leave with everybody kind of with that little bit of positivity. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. The second go around didn't work out the way um, Greg wanted it to, the way U.S. Soccer wanted it to. to. And now, you know, this this tournament, which was, and, and, and I think Jurgen said it very well on the show uh, earlier, was that you know, this was the benchmark that everyone was looking at. It's a tougher tournament against tougher opponents at home. Where's that progression from from Qatar? And that's why we're talking about this right now. What's your takeaway five years of Greg Berhalter? I think, unfortunately, a majority of fans are going to remember Greg Berhalter for post Qatar mm -hmm. and the incident with Giovanni Reyna and what he did not achieve um, in the second term. And that's unfortunate because 2018. How's Gio Reyna feeling right now, by the way? It's a good question. It's a very good question. Well, Gio Reyna, actually, since you mentioned that, apparently there was a post on Instagram. I believe it was Bleacher Report. I don't want to um, get that wrong. And one of the first people to like it, it was a post about the dismissal of Greg Berhalter, which yeah. is none other than Gio Reyna. Yeah, and, and listen, I, I know, I know that the morbid mind would immediately go to, oh, he liked it. You know, I, I don't like to get into that. Who knows if it's a slip of the hand or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't want to comment on if he liked a, a, a tweet or a, an Instagram post or whatever the case may be. But that's what, mm -hmm. that's what the majority of fans are going to think. That situation, post World Cup, the. The leadership conference seminar where he divulged those personal things inside the locker room, the huge blow up with the Reinas afterwards, the not being able to get out of the group in Copa America, the Jamaica fiasco almost losing that game. I think they will, majority of fans will focus on that second term. And, and that's that because it's been a while since the United States men's national team dominated a Mexican team. And he did that. It's, it's, he brought them back to the World Cup and got them out of a group and you can sit here and say how easy the group was or how difficult the group was, but he did it with a bunch of kids. And it's not an easy thing to do. And also the dual nap process where I thought mm -hmm. he did very well uh, in his tenure. But unfortunately, the majority of fans are going to think about that second term. Can you, sp can you explain the slip of the finger for me, please? How, how does that happen for somebody who doesn't handle social media well, all well, that well? I mean, you've, got, you've got big fingers. You know? well, sometimes, I'm, just, sometimes, I'm, just, sometimes. I'm just saying you see it and you like it. I don't know how is it that well. it's a slip of the finger. Yeah. I, I, I look at the end that we've all played for teams. Well, most of us played for teams. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. <laughs> you, play, you played college. Yeah, we're, we're played lucky. for teams. I don't know what <laughs> well, the end of that sentence was. Well, well. Yeah. <laughs> Not very good ones. But you get into a situation. <laughs> situation where any time a manager gets fired, there's always going to be people in that locker room that are happy the manager got fired and people who are unhappy that the manager got fired. And so is there a case to be made that because of the toxicity around the manager, like this team just needed a new manager? Does that infiltrate I, I think, into the I dressing room? I think the room? guys talked about it really well, that, that there is a point. Whether when, they liked him or not. It, 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 yeah, where it also got comfortable. And, and, and I think that really the last thing you want, why do managers always talk about, even when they've had a ton of success, mm. we got to bring new players in to keep people on their toes, to not let it become comfortable. And, and, and if it was a case that it was, you know, too comfortable, that doesn't breed success. So the next games are in September. Uh, the plan, according to Crocker, is to have somebody in place by then. However, if not, there is a, quote, robust contingency plan. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so don't you worry. There is a Break robust out the PowerPoint, contingency plan. And there's a process and a process and a process and a process. And eventually we'll see. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll rehire Greg Berhalter is there some again. Data you, know? you never know. Hey, you better watch out with your Club America. You never know. Hey, Johnny I know. They, did, they did flirt with, uh, with old Greg Berhalter there a little bit. 